So this is Half-Life 2, right? What if... What's up guys, it's Quandale Dingle here. Welcome to Half-Life 2 Classic, baby. Half-Life 2 Classic is an old project that's cancelled now, unfortunately. Seeing that I just did a video about a demake of Black Mesa, I thought, why not do a video about a demake for Half-Life 2? I'm quite fascinated by this subgenre of modding or development where someone takes one game and tries to recreate it in another engine. It's really charming to see this kind of work. Now, Half-Life 2 Classic had two demos, one for CD17 and one for Ravenholm. Let's check out the CD17 one first. Right from the get-go, the demo is rough to say the least, but seeing a high-poly G-man crack his neck in multiple ways is charming nonetheless. This demo basically has the whole point insertion chapter in it. In concept, it's all there, but in presentation, it's definitely a demo. I can't really judge a cancelled project, nor can I judge a demo that was under development years ago. But the whole intro sequence, the train station, seeing all of this in glorious low poly, gold source aesthetics is a vibe. Also, all the male citizens are male 07. And I just absolutely adore how the Metro Cops look like. Then there's this glorious moment. I love the fact that Barney is still wearing his old uniform but quote unquote disguised himself as a metro cop with just a floating mask in front of his face. And hearing Half-Life 2 Barney voice lines coming out of a Half-Life 1 Barney model is a thing I never knew I needed to see. Welcome. <laughs> to the About that Welcome. beer I owed ya. It's Welcome me, Gordon, Barney from Black Mesa. Hey, sorry for the scare, I had to put on a show for the cameras. I've been working undercover with civil protection. I can't take too long or they'll get suspicious. I'm way behind on my beating quota. And this iconic scene, fully recreated in Gold Source, absolutely beautiful. And now here's the big reveal, the terminal area. I love the low quality citadel that's part of the skybox. I think that's a very smart way to incorporate that into the map. But the overall feel of the area feels very congested, almost borderline liminal space territory. We make our way through the usual places, like this back alley area and the insides of the apartment block. I must say, throughout all of this, I really like how the textures were used and how close to the original it overall feels, the rooms and everything shows the people behind this didn't just do it for the lols. But then again, a project like this is absolutely humongous in scope, and honestly, it'll take a very masochistic person or group of people to fully recreate Half-Life 2 in Goal Source. I mean, the engine just isn't capable enough to fit in some parts of Half-Life 2. Chapters like Water Hazard or Highway 17 leave me wondering how in the world would someone recreate that in Half-Life 1's engine. In the City 17 demo, there's also a developer map as well, to showcase some models and the weapons. While high poly NPCs do look great, I was particularly impressed by the quality of the weapon models and their animations. They look really, really good. Now if you thought the CD17 demo looked quite clunky, rough and weird, trust me, you're not wrong. But this Ravenholm demo is far superior in quality. And I like how they turned down the poly count of the weapons. This was much better suited for this type of project, even though the earlier iterations of the weapons were much high quality looking. The only strange one I noticed was the shotgun, I, I don't know what's going on here, Lamau. 
When I saw this had the gravity gun in it, my mind started racing as to how in the world will this pull off the physics. And what I found was again what I expected from Gold Source. Apart from that, I think this Gold Source rendition of Raven Home is very well made. The texture usage, the mapping itself, and the lighting. This is what I call a proper tribute to a great chapter and shows the level of effort put into this project. So, the Raven Home demo plays out like you would expect. It is the full rendition of the chapter from Half Life 2 with all the set pieces. There are some really, really minor changes done, but you won't notice them at first glance. Hearing Grigori in glorious bit crushed gold source sound was an amazing experience. Come closer. You've stirred up hell. <laughs> A man after my own heart. Over there, a more suitable gun for you. You'll need it. My advice to you is, aim for the head. Hush. They come. In terms of gameplay, this was very fun to go through. Thanks to the gold source feel to the gameplay, it's a little bit different than what I'm used to when I play Ravenholm in normal Half-Life 2. Like I mentioned earlier, this project's scope must have been huge, but honestly, it's such a shame the project got cancelled. I don't blame the developers for it, they were right to cancel it. But what little they did manage to pull off was absolutely great. It all sums up to be a very bizarre, surreal, but charming experience. I also noticed that this demo has weapons way, so it automatically gets a 10 out of 10 from me. But it also mentions Spirit of Half-Life in the credits, so I guess the team probably started using that to further extend the engine's capabilities. The last part of the chapter looked so good. Without any dynamic lighting, it was peak gold source aesthetics. The weight on the rooftop with the view of the town was great to look at. Then there's the graveyard finale with the Padre. One thing I noticed is that there was a lack of enemies in some areas and the headcrab zombies weren't that difficult to handle. They're terrifying in the original game, but here they're just kinda cute. As usual, Grigori helps us escape and runs into the flame, and that's where the demo ends. There's another developer map in this one too. It showcases textures, models, and weapons. Overall, Half-Life 2 Classic was a mod that I think had 1% chance of being completed. The mission to recreate all of HL2 and Gold Source is a brutally difficult task. But what the demos provided was a great little window into it, sort of gave us a look at what Half-Life 2 would have been like had it come out in 1998. I hope you enjoyed this video. That's all for now, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.